it will change the world fundamentally, right? So mm -hmm. the economy of, let's say, the US then, for example, it will, it will, it will, I don't know, I don't even know, it will, it will, it will double within the next uh, two years then, you know, in a time frame of two years, we don't know. Welcome to Tesla Fix. Make sure to subscribe and like this episode. We have this uh, gruesome thing called the telematic infrastructure in Germany, um, which is a digitalization of the of the medicine uh, market. And I really see how the big software companies lobbied with the lawmaker to make something up, and uh, they um, whispered in their ear what they should do and what what they should <laughs> should uh, should try. And you really see that because the lawmaker was involved and the development took so long actually to to do something. Now it, it it's so stuck that that it's hard to get this thing unstuck really. And I kind of see that at Mercedes as well a little bit. That's just an assumption of me that that uh, Mercedes did everything in their playbook to try to get the regulation like it is and and now you see what what kind of mess we have with 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 the drive pilot level three system where the air conditioning runs on auto when you just started for example that the the windows don't get fogged and anything and then if you're near a construction site it just disengages if you're in a tunnel it disengages if you don't have internet connection it disengages so it disengages on so many levels and it's so hard coded still that um i think it's not feasible when they reach a point where they should go to level five it's much they more difficult scale. to go from yeah they cannot exactly. scale up yeah totally and and maybe i don't know who wants to answer this question how do you see now fsd 12 in the picture of of the context yeah. maybe even compare it with the drive pilot in that sense that you say okay we have a hard-coded system here which is totally uh great like okay you can take your hands off the wheel and mercedes is is at fault if something happens then but still yeah, yeah I, I, I think you're completely right in, in pointing out the main difference. It's a hard-coded system mm -hmm. with all manually entered rules to make a system comply with the legislation. And that's also the mindset of this legislative framework because you cannot foresee what will happen in the future. So why make legislation for something yes. that's still in development and still in the early phases? A system like DrivePilot will have major difficulties in scaling up or making the mm -hmm. step from level three to five. That's the biggest hurdle because we're already so long in the level one, two stages. We understand that game. It's not that difficult to make an automated lane keeping system. And it's also mm -hmm. not that difficult to make uh, a lane change. But what is difficult is perception and planning and and, and acting with with your environment and all this all this, these different road users. And that's where FSD comes into play. Their thinking has always been from first principles. How are we going to tackle this issue on the bigger scale? What's the end goal? How do we get there? They don't care about level one or two or three and great for them. But how are we going to make this giant leap mm -hmm. by making shitty versions sometimes where you think mm -hmm. FSD, why the hell are you doing this? Why mm -hmm. are you breaking? But it needs those mistakes. And what it needs them for the most part is vehicle data, fleet data. And that's where the main benefit and driver of the growth and development of the system is. It's in a massive data they're, they're, they're generating every day, every day. And even cars without FSD are sending that data back. So what other companies are doing, they have smaller fleets, less data coming in, and also not the technical know-how to mm -hmm get those data sets prepared for training and then having mm -hmm. the data centers and the, the compute power to to handle all that data coming in yep. so for now it's we'll see players like bmw and mercedes on the forefront and still they make techno technologically perfect products and it works really good but they're going to get leapfrogged. Yeah, yeah leapfrogged yeah, leapfrog. by yeah. Tesla. Tesla is, I can say, it, the diesel. They're taking a little bit of time, but then they're coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's it's also it's it's not the question anymore if we are able to to get to level five. That's not the question anymore in the yes. market. I mean, it's it's already shown by Cruise and Waymo that's possible. The question is who's going to scale the robo taxi business. Yes as fast as possible with uh, Cruise and Waymo and the other players. They don't have the, the, the scalable business solution yet. 
in place. Number one is data, of course. You need all the data and you, you need cars on the road. Then you, you need a system which is able to reproduce in every part of the world. So not just by getting into a part of the world and just start all over again. So it needs to be uh, generic and not geofenced. And a second, you need compute power to really handle this data. And that's that's something that we learned the last uh, few months as well. Who are the winners in this game? I mean, uh, it's, it's not the traditional auto uh, makers. It's the people who are actually buying the compute power. And well, Tesla's not only buying compute power, they're actually building their own dojo. So <laughs> uh, I mean, we can talk about hours about this, but it's it's amazing. If you've read the book from Elon, it also says that they, they've been building the car as if it's already a robot taxi. And it's always been all in for them to to make this a, a, a self-driving car. So it's not only about driving, making an electric car, but it's about making an autonomous car. So it's already baked in, into the production, into the machine that builds the machine. It's, it's baked in, in everything already. Yeah, well... I'm talking too much, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It's, I, I mean, you, yeah. you really ha have a lot of points here. Uh, it's, it's, it's really crazy how, how this development is unfolding now with, with the different approaches. And I remember when the, when the early phase was with the drive pilot in, in Germany, I've heard from a friend who worked at Mercedes, actually. I'm like, yeah, Tesla is a totally different approach. How do you do it? How do you train your your drive pilot uh, prototype thing to to read signs and everything and they said yeah we sent the video footage to india and then there is a fleet of people who go through the files and tag a, a little bit what it is i mean this is similar like tesla did it in the beginning but very yeah in the beginning and still of course they they still have to to flag what what is what but now the system is already so far developed that the the system itself could identify things and a mercedes still had to really much uh, like do it by hand and this is the fruit of the system that they have now i mean it it works so limited so if they know knew that oh this scenario is a little bit bad for the for drive pilot let's just disengage there and then they have like that's the, the problem with the system that it doesn't go through every scenario you have even if the road is maybe for example i don't know something fell over or dirt fell off a truck and the road isn't visible anymore fsd would could handle this kind of situation and the drive by pilot couldn't and if you know Germany, the internet connection here is, is sometimes very horrible because we are behind Bulgaria and, and so, uh, with the internet connections. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that. It's, uh, it's yeah. time for Starlink in uh, Germany. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So another question was uh, maybe to Friedrich again for one second. Um, how do you view uh, this development in Germany? Do you think my fear, for example, is that Germany will, will have a long arm in the EU Parliament and try to pu push their rules to the European Parliament? And how do you view this? Maybe you can say something about this. I don't know. But uh... yeah. so uh, personally, I don't I don't I don't want to be involved uh, too much in politics. <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's laughs> but, uh, uh, of course, I can I can give my two cents here. Um, so I see it, you know, because you also ask it a uh, timeline FSD uh, 12. We, we are talking about uh, general artificial intelligence, right? Yes. on FS12 and this is way bigger than just <laughs> uh, you know driving uh, cars without drivers or autonomous driving this is if uh, Tesla is you know bringing out the bots and and Optimus and all, all of that if they really you know come up with this within the next that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's two three four five years if they if they if they uh, execute on this plan and it comes true it will change the world fundamentally right so mm -hmm. the economy of let's say the us then for example it will it will it will i don't know i don't even know it will, it will double within the next uh, two years then you know in the time frame of two years we don't know but all i know is when there is money you know things change <laughs> faster way faster than before <laughs> And one of the reasons, in my opinion, is that we have this whole uh, shebang about, uh, you know, autonomous driving in Europe and whatever, because nobody like has any, you know, good business case uh, presented by a, to a politician. And they never really looked into this and, and thought about the idea, really, of if we're really going to do this, what, what happens to our, the economy of our country, Germany, or what doesn't matter what country it is in the end. But all I know is that as soon as someone 
realizing is it will happen very fast because if there's money involved things go just way faster and then out of nowhere it doesn't matter anymore if this regulation is in this country or whatever because they see okay we cannot keep up with the us or with this country if we do not allow autonomous vehicles if we do not allow ai in our country and and and, and so on and so on and then it will go way faster than before and i think this is something that nobody really has on their radar when it comes to uh, talking about uh, uh, timelines because now it has no it's, it's not a, we're not talking about too much, mm -hmm. much money, i guess so it's not high, high on the priority list um but tesla knows you know and they, they they're prioritizing it and and us things are different we know and therefore um this is my my my, my opinion on it yeah yeah interesting yeah. i i think i i need to disagree kind of with with your statement john um mm -hmm. i don't think it's necessarily lobbying and making legislation a lot slower because having the right sets of rules and regulations in place will also give them an opportunity to take advantage of this new technology and this new business because it, it's not it's not too late they're going to be mm -hmm. they are late but there are a lot of smart people at brands like uh like mercedes-benz but also at bmw yes, of course. and they also have a lot of financial backing a lot mm -hmm. of debts also and diminishing margins but if they play it well within a regulatory framework that suits them and suits all players in the field field everybody can benefit 